that it, this is just saying that the obfuscation has to be useful, that it has to preserve with overwhelming probability, it has to preserve the functionality of the lookup function. Uh, so this has nothing to do with security, this has to do with correctness. But security comes from this thing which is called the virtual black box property. And that's the name that was used by Barack and company in the original paper on the impossibility of obfuscation. And this says that for any polynomial time, probabilistic polytime adversary, there is a simulator which produces the same output. That is, um, here the adversary is working on the real database. But here the simulator is working just on the ideal functionality. It actually get, it, it gets a bunch of ones. It doesn't get access to the real database. And if anything that the real world adversary can learn from the real database, the simulator can learn by accessing just the ideal functionality, I mean from the real obfuscated database, this is just saying that with overwhelming probability, there is no more information contained in the obfuscated database than in the ideal functionality. And the third, and again, this will look completely standard if you're familiar with secure multi-party computation. If you are not, I'm hoping you just get the intuition that somehow uh, I'm saying that no more information is contained in the obfuscation than in the ideal functionality. Yeah. Should there be a A in the second with the second probability or? Uh, in the second probability. A of the, those, this thing. Uh, yes, that's true. The simulator, you're, you're right. Simulator will, as always, it will run adversary as a black box and use its output. Yes, you're right. Uh, it's sort of implicit here, but, but simulator depends on A. It's not universal simulator, of course. And the third requirement is, uh, it's sort of natural, it's polynomial expansion. I don't want the obfuscated database, I want it to be within a polynomial factor of the real database, because otherwise, you know, if I could uh, explode it exponentially, you know, yes, I can obfuscate it, but it's not very interesting. Okay, so let me discuss the definition before I go into the construction. So, first of all, this notion of indistinguishability from ideal functionality is not always the same as your intuitive notion of privacy. It's kind of orthogonal to it, okay? Because some forms of access are permitted by the ideal functionality. And the goal is not to hide individual data enters, but to control how they can be accessed. Again, using my simple example of obfuscated phone book and distinguishable from the lookup function, it's saying that it's hard to find the phone that you don't know the name. What it does not say is that it's hard to find the name for which there is a phone in the database. I hope you appreciate this distinction, okay? This, uh, you know, maybe you can guess and extract information, a lot of information from the obfuscated database. That's fine because you can extract exactly the same information from the ideal functionality. I control how you can extract this information. I control the pattern of access. I don't really control the information that you can extract. So, so this, this is, I hope this illustrates the difference between giving you no access and permitting some forms of access. And you know, I'm not going to argue that this is the right definition or the wrong definition. That just depends on the application, okay? Uh, for some applications this is right, for some it's not. So it's, you know, depends on what you really want to do. So let me give you a simple construction. Just for the simple case, it's going to be a very simple construction for this lookup function. So uh, here is a row of the original database, x i y i, and I'm going to replace it by an obfuscated row that looks like this. It's a random number then hash of x and the random number, another random number, and another hash of x, x sort with yi. So this is the obfuscation, and I'm claiming this obfuscation satisfies my definition for the lookup function. So why? Well, let me give you an intuitive argument. I'm gonna skip the proof. The proof is fairly easy, at least in the random oracle model. It's not uh, so easy without the random oracle model, but for now, let's say I'm happy with random oracle model. Um, and the intuition here is this. If you know x, it's very easy to extract y. If you know x, you can just uh, recompute this hash easily and learn y by XORing. But if you don't know x, or in particular if you want to learn x from this database, you would need to invert the hash function, which is presumably hard. Okay? So, and the reason you need, by the way, these random numbers is just, you know, for sort of basic reasons, chosen plain text security. Uh, it's uh, because if you don't have R1 and R2, then every time X appears in the database, it'll look exactly the same. 
So, so that's not a good thing. Okay, so this is a simple construction, and this happens to be an obfuscation. And the reason it works is because this is an obfuscation of a point function, actually. It's an obfuscation on an equality of x, okay? So nothing particularly adventurous is happening here, but it's still a fairly cute construction which allows you to obfuscate uh, exactly what you want to uh, obfuscate. That is, the only way to access this database is uh, by, to supply x, and then you learn y. If you don't know x, there is no way to learn y from it, and if you and no way to learn x either. Uh, the only difficulty here now access time becomes linear in the size of the database and the number of rows because you don't know in which row of the database x is. So you have to try your x on every row, see if the uh, second hash compute if the first hash computed correctly, and if it computed correctly, compute the second hash and extract y. Okay. Any questions about this construction? So this is, I, I hope you see what's going on. You know, it, I'm just saying that. If you know x, it's easy to learn y. If you don't know x, you cannot learn y, and you cannot learn x either. That's all, okay? And uh, I hope you see from this uh, thing that if you know x, all the hashes can be easily computed, y is extracted in no time. And uh, yeah. You said that access time is now linear in uh, D. Yeah. But that depends on your select condition also. If you're just... If you have 10, 10 fields and you're just, you want y for where one field is equal to something. Yeah. Is it, is, is it still? Uh, it's still? It's still linear indeed. If, if, you, if your select condition is only on a quality on one field, you have to look at every row and see if that field is in that column of that row. Okay. Now let me do something more difficult. Now let me talk to the notion, I'll call it mass privacy or group pri privacy. Now I want something more adventurous than the lookup function. I want to make it so that extracting one record is easy, or small number of records, you know, and I'll call this legitimate account access, things like responding to a customer request or something. But harvesting many records is hard, okay? So this is like, you know, I give you an email database, and if you really want to send an email to your long lost classmate, you can do that. That's easy to do if you know his name and the school he went to. But if you want to use this database to send a Vi Viagra pitch to everybody, that is hard to do. Okay? So now this is, uh, this is something more complicated than just plain lookup because I want to make, somehow I want to draw this distinction between small number of records and large number of records. So what are applications of something like that? Electronic directories, where you prevent malicious users from harvesting information. Things like, I don't know, outsourced customer support. So you outsource it to some place far away, and then in response to a customer request, support clerk can easily look up a number, but they cannot just go into the database and just download it, the whole thing and send spams to everybody. Things like you know, multi-institution drug trials where partner institutions don't trust each other. You can share test subject rate, uh, records where you don't know them a revelation condition, it's not known in advance, maybe later on you get some group of symptoms and you want to be open records of all subjects uh, with a certain group of symptoms, but still to prevent dictionary attacks, you want queries based on partial information, should take a long time to evaluate. So this is the intuition, like somehow if you get one thing, it's quick, if you get many things, it's slow. Let me make it just a little bit more precise. What I want is, I'll call it exponential slowdown. And uh, I'll claim that one thing that separates legitimate questions from mass harvesting is this, that legitimate users know what they're looking for and can describe it more or less precisely, okay? So give me the email of some person and you can describe this person. But abusers, they just want everything. They want to send email to everybody. They want everybody's information. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do an obfuscated construction where the idea is this that if you ask some query of the database, we, and there are n rows in the database that satisfy this question, then you force the user to guess n bits to compute the answer, okay? So the answer is encrypted and the user learns all but n bits of the key. And you can see what's going on. So if you can describe a record, some condition which is satisfied by two records in the database, you'll need to guess two bits. That's very easy to do. If you have, if you give, ask some question 